to you Metset. My name is Hayley Evers King and we're here today in the atrium of our headquarters in Darmstadt. In this video we're going to show you how to access data through the Wekio platform. You can access the Wekio platform through www.wekio.eu and you'll arrive on the home page. Here you'll find different things that you can look at, different ways to access the data and lots of supporting information. You can sign up for an account to access the data services and the hosted computing resources that Wekio offers. From the web page here there are several ways that you can access data. If you click on the data tab up here, this will take you to our data viewer. It will look something like this when you first start. Through the data viewer, you can start searching for many different types of data that are available through the Copernicus program and provided through the WebKey platform. By clicking on the layers button over here, you'll open up the catalog. And here you can scroll and find all the different types of data that are available through the WebKey platform. On the left-hand side, there are various filters that you can use to refine your search, but you can also type in the search box to look for what you're interested in. Today I'm going to have a look for some Sentinel-3 data. This is one of the satellites we operate here at UMETSAT and the data that I work with myself. I'm going to click here on Sentinel-3 and you can see that 12 data sets have come up. I can scroll down and I can find all the different products that are available from this satellite. Today I'm going to look at the Ultra Level 1B full resolution product. This product is uh, measured at the top of the atmosphere, so we haven't done any corrections to look at the water leaving signal. We're actually just looking at what the Earth looks like from the top of the atmosphere through this optical satellite instrument. Here you can see that you can look at the details of the product. It'll tell you a bit about it, the data set ID, where it comes from, the sensors, time, area they're covered, and also provide you with lots of links to find more information about the product. It also gives you um, more information about who to contact, who created this data, where does it come from. We can also click to add to map. You can do that both from this section and from the previous catalog entry that I showed you. And now you can see that we've got some data appeared on our map and I can move around and look at the Earth's surface. You can see here the different swaths of the satellite. You can see different features, clouds, storms, etc. And you can also see the ocean surface and the land surface. Ultra provides information on all of these features and you can use the data in many, many different ways for lots of different applications. I'm going to have a look in particular for a certain feature that I know was present this last week. And if we scroll over here, we'll hopefully see it. Over here, you can see this is a typhoon. And this in particular is Typhoon Mindule. And I'm quite interested in getting some data from this. So I can see the data in the platform here, but how do I actually access it? Well, if you look over on the left-hand side where we have the layers button, you can see the product's been loaded in here. There's a little button here with an arrow which allows you to download the data. If I click on that, you have various different options that you can use in order to choose a small part of the data or one particular uh, file that you're interested in. So I can set a bounding box. I can do this by typing in these boxes here, or I can also draw a box. So I'm gonna do that in this case and just draw a little box here over the feature that I'm interested in. And I can then copy that in from the map. I can then choose where I want to search for data in terms of time. So I can choose in the timeline here. I'm actually gonna look for these two days worth of data. You can type or you can use what you've been looking at on the bottom timeline here. As well as selecting the area that you're interested in and the time period that you're interested in, there are also other characteristics of the data that you can choose to select by in this um, option menu here. For Sentinel-3 you have orbit direction, ascending and descending passes which relates to the satellite orbit and the timeliness. Here you can choose whether you would like data that is available near real time. So for events that have happened relatively recently, this might be the one you would need to use. If you're looking at something that happened a little way away in the past, so over a month ago, for example, you would want to use the non-time critical data. They're effectively the same data, but with the non-time critical data, we've added in additional metadata products that allow for um, improved quality across the product that you receive. So if you can, always use the non-time critical data. So I've now selected all that and I can click here to request the data, and this will then select, uh, send a request to our harmonized data access system, which underlies the whole Wekio platform. I can then download the data. If I click on this, it will send the request. You can see it's sending now, but I can also look in my jobs. You can see here, there's various other searches that I've been conducting in the past. And when the request has run a um, Option will show up here. You can see this is the one that's currently running, but I have a previous one where you have a folder which will show the results. If I look at this one yesterday that I ran, it shows there's a data set that I found using these search parameters. 
I can then download the data by clicking this button here. This is one way of doing things. You can do it manually through this graphical user interface. And it's quite nice if you're looking for a specific event or a type of data, you want to actually see what's there because you can use the viewer to see what's actually in the data before you download it. It's quite good for getting familiar with the different types of data. You may want to add other layers and see, should I be using Sentinel-3 data or Sentinel-2? Or maybe I want to use both together. So this is a really good exploratory way of looking for the type of data you need for your application. However, when you want to scale up your work, you may want to do this in a more automated way. Say you want to download the same bit of Sentinel-3 data for the same area every day, every week, or for an entire time series. You can do this using the Harmonized Data Access through the API. Um, you can also find out how to do this through this um, data viewer here. So if we go back to my um, search options here and open up the subsetter, when I enter in my um, options, as I'll do it again here, I get to the end and instead of requesting the data, I can also show the API request. And what this does is shows you effectively what's going on behind the scenes when you click that request data button. You have this, what we call a JSON file here, or a JSON format that allows you to send effectively a request to the computer system behind the scenes of what is going on in our data viewer here. So you can copy this and then you can use this in a programmatic way in order to um, select your data routinely. Um, you could, for example, write a program that will change the area that you're searching or even the product or uh, the time period that you want to look over. Next, I'm going to show you how you can take this API request example here and integrate it into some programming code to repeat this sort of query and download the data in a much, much more automated way and where you could scale up your application to look at many, many different images or over different time periods using different products. So we're going to copy this information here and I'll show you where we're going to put it in a second. If we go back to the main web page of Wekio here, this uh, the Wekio homepage, you can see um, that we have other options other than data where we looked for our uh, data viewer. You can also access services, information on pricing, documents and support. Um, you can also click here on dashboard and when you have an account, this will give you access to other facilities that we offer on Wekio. Once you've accessed the Wekio dashboard associated with your account, you have access to a variety of other facilities that we offer through the platform. And this includes a Jupyter environment. If you click here, this will open up our Wekio Jupyter Lab. When you open the Jupyter Lab, you'll be presented with an environment that looks something like this. The Jupyter Lab is an interactive environment where you can um, execute code in an interactive way using Jupyter notebooks. Here we have um, a Python environment set up, so you can write Python code and run it here to um, access data and to work with data in many different ways. We've also provided a whole bunch of different example notebooks for you that work already with Wekio data and that's what I'm going to show you now. So on this folder when you've um, accessed the um, your own JupyterLab instance you can find this one called work and if you click in there you'll find a folder called Wekio JupyterLab and this is some example code that we've created to help you to access data on Wekio and to use it for some different applications. This is code that's also featured in our different uh, tutorials and trainings. Today we're going to have a look at the example under the Wekio HDA folder which show you how to use that API request that we looked at in the data viewer in a more programmatic fashion. So if I double click on that you'll see here there's various different things but down here is a file which has the extension IPYNB, which is an IPython notebook. It's an interactive Python notebook. So if you click on that, it will open up the notebook example. And the really nice thing about notebooks is they can be um, documented. So you have code that you can execute, things that will actually do things with your computer, with data, them in order to help people understand what you've done in your code. And this is a really great way of you sharing code with other people, and in this case, for me to share code with you. So this example you can read through in your own time. Um, it tells you lots and lots of information about the Harmonized Data Access API and the different steps that you can use in order to access it programmatically. Um, in the notebooks, you can read these cells. So each piece of a notebook is a cell. So this bit here you see here is a cell. This is text. It's marked down. You can see there it tells you that it's a text format. If you click play, it will reconfigure it but you also have other cells that look more like this, which are interactive code. So this is typically the first sort of cell that you'll see in a Jupyter notebook. Um, it imports the different libraries that we use in Python, so different functions that we want to use. Um, if you click on that, you can then click the play button and it will execute the code. And you can see that it's run because the number here in the little box increments. So what we've done here is just import 
some basic libraries and functions that we're going to use. The next box, we're going to import some further functions that we've written ourselves in order to work with the Harmonized Data Access API. So I'm going to click that one too. And then the rest of the notebook works through the steps that you would need to undertake in order to access data in a programmatic way through the API. So this first bit here tells you how to search for data sets. We've just looked at that, so you don't, maybe don't need to read this bit if you've watched the video. Um, but you can here you can reference it if you need to go back and understand how to look through the data viewer for different data sets. One of the key things you need is the data set ID. We saw it before on the Ultra Level 1B full resolution information that we looked at. You can see it here, that's the data set ID. So if you ever need to know the data set ID of a different data set, you can go back to the data viewer, search for it, and then pull that information out for yourself. So we've set that data set ID here. The next thing you need to do is get an API key. So this is a bit of information that allows you to connect your account to the data access system. And these are generated based upon your password and username that you have when you sign up for a Wekio account. And we have a little function that allows you to generate the API key here programmatically, but you can also do it through the Wekio website as well. Uh, in order to do this programmatically, you would need to um, use your username and password. You'll see here, these are just set at the moment as username and password. If I'm running this myself, I would put my username and password in there. So for you to run this code, you will need to put your username and password in. You can then click to execute this code and it will eventually generate your API key. You can see I've run this before, but I've now taken out my username and password. Alternatively, you can enter a key that you've generated manually through the web page if you'd like to, um, but you can also do it using this code above. The next step of this notebook is initializing the request for the API. You can see there's several steps here, including setting where we want to download the data to. And then we create a, a dictionary, which is an item in Python that allows us to store bits of information together. So in this case, we're creating a dictionary that includes our data set ID, the API key that we generated before, and where we want to download our data to. And then using this, we can then request an access token to get the data, accept the terms and conditions. And then we've done everything we need to do initializing the data request. In this section here, we're showing how to load a data descriptor file, which is effectively the JSON information that you saw in the data viewer. We've copied that information into a file. You can see it over here, Alt Data Descriptor. If you double click on it, it will load and you can actually see what it looks like in here. It gives you all the different information you can click through. You can also expose this as a, in a plain text format and it will look then exactly like it looked in the data viewer. So let me close that for now. Again, in the image here, you can just see a reminder of how we generated this file using the data viewer. So this is the same example that we looked at just now. And this is what it looks like in the API request on the data viewer. You can load the file using this JSON function, which is part of Python that we in, uh, imported earlier. And there's some, um, there's some functions here that will tell you uh, whether your file is in the correct format or not, if you've written it yourself or if you've copied and pasted it in. Here, ours is fine. Um, you can also set the information yourself in this little bit of um, code that we've provided here. So you've got several options. We then initiate the quest here and this assigns a job ID to it. So this is what you saw before on the data viewer. We had this section called jobs. This is allowing the system to trace the request that you've sent and whether, um, what the status of it. So whether it's finished, um, whether it's returned no results, for example. Then we can get our results here. And we can see in this example where I've already run it that we found the same file that we found before using the data viewer. Once you've found the, the, the data file that you would like to download, you then create an order ID, which allows you to then download the data. So this is what's happening in this next section here. And finally, you send a download request to the API. And you can see here, when I ran this before, that it was downloading to my location in the JupyterLab here. So that's this folder that we're in currently at the moment. You can see the name of the file that we were downloading. And there's a progress bar here that will show you how quickly it's downloaded to the space that you're working in at the moment. And this one is already downloaded. For me, it took 13 seconds. And once this has been completed, you should see that the data appears in the working directory that you set. So in my case, I asked to download it to the folder that this notebook is in. And you can see over here on the left hand side is the example um, that we've downloaded here. If you then look at some of the other notebooks that are available in this um, set on our Wekio JupyterLab, it will show you how to work with this sort of data.